Hey guys, Sam here at NH Studios. Today I want to take a look at Logic's compressor, but specifically I want to take a look at the part of the compressor that nobody really talks about, and I feel like is slightly misunderstood. We're going to take a look at the sidechain detection circuit. We're going to learn all about it, exactly how every part of it functions, and how it is going to affect your audio. Let's take a look. Okay, so we have our familiar Platinum Digital Compressor here. This is the Logic built-in compressor, the one that you get when you just go and you want some compression. Let's take a listen to how it sounds straight off the bat. Okay, so I've just got some default settings kind of loaded up. I've got a ratio of five to one. I've got a threshold just chopping off a load of the peaks. I've got a very fast attack and a pretty fast release as well. That's just so that we can hear exactly what's going on. We're going to manipulate those as we move through, but let's leave it there for the moment. So as it stands, we are just compressing the entirety of the signal. Whenever anything breaches the threshold, we are compressing it. And that's how we traditionally know compressors to work. But the sidechain section over here is where things get really interesting. So I'm going to leave it in graph mode as opposed to the more usual meter mode because it's going to be kind of easier for us to see stuff here. So in graph mode, staying on Platinum Digital, let's take a look at the sidechain. Now, there are a few features here that we need to fully understand in order to get the most out of this compressor. The detection I'm going to come on to in a moment because we need to have a firmer grasp of what happens down in the filter modes before we can really delve into that. So we want to take a look at the filter section here. At the moment, we've got the filter section turned off. We're not listening to anything particular in the sidechain. We're just compressing the entirety of the signal. If we turn the filter on, then this is where the frequency and the mode come into play. First off, we have LP, which is low pass. That means it's only going to allow the low frequencies to pass through the detector circuit. So it's not going to listen to the high frequencies. And we can audition this by clicking the listen button. So let's take a listen to this low pass filter and hear what our compressor is going to hear when it's engaged. And you can see when I bring down that low pass filter, the compressor is affecting the signal, but only when the kick is sounding. It's leaving the snare out of it. Let's see what it sounds like with and then without. So you can see from the graphical display that it is compressing just when the kick drum sounds when that low pass filter is engaged. It's only listening to the low frequencies. When we take that out, it's listening to the full range signal again. So it's compressing when that snare comes in. The next one up is BP. Now this is bandpass. We can set this to a certain frequency range so that it only compresses when that certain area of the frequency spectrum is heard. Let's try and set that around the snare drum right now. So I'm gonna to go to listen again, just so I can hear exactly what I'm tuning. Okay, so I've got some snare drum in there, but I'm still getting some of the kick. And this is where the Q control comes in. As we turn that Q control up, we are tightening that band. So we're only affecting a smaller range of frequencies. So we can really zone in on that snare drum. Then as we bring the threshold up, we can see that we're only affecting the snare drum. Let's take a listen with that on and then with it off and we'll see that we're only compressing that snare drum. So with that filter engaged, we're only compressing the snare drum. The rest of the frequency content, the kick drum in particular, is allowed to come through unaffected, but the snare drum is getting compressed. Next up then, we've got high pass. High pass is the same as low pass, but just in the opposite way. So this is only allowing the high frequencies to pass through the detection circuit. 
so we can make it so that the kick drum doesn't get affected by this compressor. Let's take a listen to how that sounds. So when we have that high pass filter engaged, it's not going to compress the stuff in the low end. It's not going to compress the kick. It's going to allow that to pass through unaffected. It is, however, going to affect the snare and the hi-hats if they breach the threshold because they are in that high frequency content. Next up then is para EQ. And this is one of two modes that allows us to EQ into the compressor so that it's hearing part of a separate frequency range more than another. Let's take a listen to that in practice. So as I go up to para EQ, we get this gain which comes available to us. Let's set that just to zero for a moment and we're gonna to listen to this filter and tune this in. So I'm gonna try and get it so it's just where that snare is. I'm gonna try and boost up the frequency spectrum of where that snare lies so that the compressor is hearing the snare more and it's gonna compress that area more than any other. So you'll notice when I bring that filter off, it starts compressing far less. That's because I'm bringing up the gain into the detector circuit. So that frequency area that I'm boosting is becoming louder for the compressor. So as I'm taking that filter off, it's not hearing as much of that snare signal. As I put it on, it's hearing more of the signal that I'm boosting into it. Let's just do that one more time so we're really familiar with what it's doing. So that was compressing the snare again at a slightly higher frequency. I'm boosting that EQ of the snare into the compression detector circuit. And what that's doing is it's allowing the detector to hear more of that certain frequency range. So when that frequency range is present in the signal, it's compressing down harder. Next up we have HS and this is the high shelf. It does a similar thing to the parametric EQ except it's working on a shelf level. So you set the frequency that you want to increase the frequencies above and then you boost them up. Let's take a look at that in practice. So we're boosting up those high frequencies into the compressor, into the detection circuit, so it hears more of them. So it's going to compress down on that signal more when those frequencies are present. It's not a multiband compressor. It's not only compressing those frequencies, but rather we are making those frequencies more apparent to the compressor so that it will then compress the full signal more. So moving away from the filter onto that section just above the detection, this is where things get a little easier, but then a little more confusing. So if we choose between peak and RMS, peak is the peak information, so the loud information. With drums, it's very peak heavy, very transient heavy. We've got lots of peaks, lots of spikes. RMS is going to be listening to a more average sound over the duration of the beat. So peak is going to be more aggressive with drums, whereas RMS is going to listen to the average. If a peak is looking at the actual peak of the drum, the initial loud part, well, drums have that initial loud transient, but then die away rather quickly. So RMS is going to be listening to the peak, but it's also going to be listening to the part that's dying away. So it's going to be averaging that sound out. 
is going to be taking the loud parts and the quiet parts, averaging them together and getting something there that is less than just the peak information. Peak is only bothered with the loud parts. Let's take a listen to how this is affecting the way in which it's compressing. So the peak is far more aggressive. It's grabbing hold of those transients and it's bringing them down. The RMS is far smoother. It's not as concerned with the peak information. It's more concerned about the overall average level of the signal. Now max and sum, this is where things get a little confusing. And often if you're just compressing one source or one mono, one stereo source, this is not really going to have much difference. This is not going to change things. We have to have a scenario that is going to lend itself to this making a difference. So when Max is engaged, the compressor will listen to the left and the right hand side of the signal. If either of those sides breach the threshold, then it will compress the entire signal. It doesn't matter if the right hand side doesn't breach the signal, if the left hand side does, then it will compress both sides. When sum is engaged, that detector circuit won't listen to just left and right, it will listen to them both as one. And that's doing something to the sound. If you've got the same thing in the left and right, then as you are bringing them both into the centre, both into one detector, then you're actually going to be increasing that level by six decibels. So the detector circuit is going to know that and it's going to work accordingly. It sounds a bit confusing, but let's just have a look at this in practice and we can see an easy way of actually visualising this. So I've got that same loop here, but I've got it duplicated. One is panned hard left and one is panned hard right. And then on that track stack, I've put the compressor. So when both left and right are engaged, and when they're both exactly the same, max and sum are going to be identical. Let's just make sure we can see that now. So you can see on the graph that both of those are identical. But what about if we take one of those that's panned to the side and we bring it all the way down? Let's see how max and sum affects things now. So you can see that max is actually compressing far more than sum in this instance. This is because we've got these signals panned hard and left. And as we said, if it's on sum, it's expecting the combination of those two signals to be 6 dB louder. But as we're bringing one of them down, we're then not adding in that extra signal. So it's expecting to have something far louder, but it's not actually getting it. So when it's on max, if we take the signal that's in the left and we take it down completely, the signal is still in the right. So as we said, because that signal is in one side, it's going to compress both of them together. Remember, Max just listens to left and right, and if either the left or the right breaches the threshold, it will compress. So that panning is kind of irrelevant here. But Sum is listening to the sum of both of them. It's expecting it to be 6 dB louder, but it's not getting 6 dB louder because we're taking one of them completely down. So it's not getting the stereo information it's expecting, Therefore, it's going to behave differently. The compressor in Logic is fantastic. We've not even touched upon any of the other emulations that are in there. If you're interested in that, I've done another video that's comparing these emulations with their paid alternatives. You can check it out at the top. But here we're just looking at that detection circuit and the side chain input that we can have. We can make the compressor listen to a different part of the signal to have a different effect on the audio. It's super important when you're trying to affect a certain part of the audio on a frequency basis, and you can do that all within the compressor. Now you understand it. Thanks so much for checking it out. I'll see you again soon. Take care.